Welcome to the Evangelism Podcast. I'm Daniel King, and I'm excited about telling people about Jesus. Today, I have a very special guest, Miss Jocelyn Hansen. She leads Fusion Canada. We are in Morinville, Alberta, and thank you so much for being on the Evangelism Podcast. Thank you, Daniel. It's really exciting to be able to share the story with you, so thank you. So let's start at the beginning. Tell me, what is Fusion Canada? Well, Fusion Canada is a branch of Fusion International, which started in Australia 65 years ago by a name, man named Mel Garvin, who was a young man at the time searching for his purpose in life and came across a Bible camp and found Jesus there. And how did you get connected to Fusion International? So then, interestingly enough, my daughter was working in Canmore, Alberta, right out of high school, and she met the Australians who had come to see uh, Banff and Jasper, and they asked her if she had a passion, what her passion was, and she said, oh, she would love to go to Africa someday. And they said, well, come in, uh, to Fusion Intern in Australia, and uh, that's how it got started. And then later, you ended up bringing it here to Canada because it had such a tremendous impact on your daughter's life? Then there were some people in Edmonton who were already connected and they had brought the internationals to Banff and so we did our first foundations course I think 2003 and it just struck a chord with uh, my heart to serve the community in the front lines and to find creative ways to care for people in our communities. I really love your focus on going into a community and having an impact in the community. Tell me kind of what Fusion does. What is the goal of Fusion? We want to share the good news of God's love and we want to do it in a way that's by making relationships and walking with people on their journeys. Um, the gospel comes alive when we're walking with each other and we're sharing God's love and that looks many, many, many different ways, whether it's for young people at risk or seniors who need help or um, mental illness. Um, we let it be creative where it is. It isn't cookie cutter and that's what I love about it. Uh, you go into a community and you say, God, what are you doing here? And then he invites you into the story that he's already well on with. And then uh, we get to be a part of that because God is good. Now, it sounds like there's many different expressions of how Fusion reaches out to the community and gets involved in what God is doing. And I, I know, uh, talking to uh, your son-in-law, Maddie. He loves doing block parties and, and going into a community and just bringing people together and having a time of fellowship. And so you have block parties. What are some other ways that you, you reach into a community and make a difference? Yeah, so the, the festival, the block party came out of wanting churches and community organizations to work together. So we were in West Edmonton for over 10 years and we did breakfast clubs in junior highs and high schools and we worked with the police, the community leagues, the churches, anybody that wanted to make a difference in their community, believing always that together we're better and together there is hope that we all bring something that is essential to the responses of the needs in the community and that no one of us has all of the answers but together we can really shine the light of Jesus in a community. So with that we also have um, some training, um, foundations is sort of the underpinning knowledge of uh, the gospel, living with God, living with others, living with yourself, and then community transformation. But always the goal is to inspire a kingdom cell group of people who can then go and see what the Lord's doing and, and play the part that they're invited to play. Let's talk more about the foundations course because it sounds like that's really the foundation mm -hmm. to discipling and, and really turning people uh, from maybe someone who doesn't have much exposure to God to really having a living relationship with God. So kind of describe to me what does the foundations course look like? How does someone go through it? And, and what are some of the things that they learn as they go through? Mm. 
Thanks, Daniel. Uh, when I did foundations for the first time, um, I grew up in the church. My dad was the pastor, so I wasn't really expecting to blow, be blown away. I thought, you know what you know, and uh, probably came with some arrogance in, in all of that. And I think what I loved the most was that it was actually tools of how important it is to listen to another human being and why listening is so profound. And then things about our own like body, soul, and spirit. We've all got bruises and deficits. We've all got things that have gone wrong because we live in a broken world. But then the redemption of Jesus and the forgiveness of Jesus and the glory of God, justice, mercy, and compassion. And so whether you're a new believer or whether you've been believing for 40 years, I found that the Course always meets you where you're at and the group of people that God in brings together for that time that we share um, is always for the work that he wants to do. So it allows for a large gamut of flexibility for sharing the gospel and going deeper at the same time. And so how does, how do people go through the Foundations course? How long does it take to go through it? So we can, we have a one week foundations course that would be generally residential so we'd rent a camp and 40 or 50 of us would turn up and we would do life together and it would be from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. and it was foundations is a really really jam-packed course most would say there's too much for too little time so now we've done it 12 week with two weekend retreats um, we've done it as small groups in churches and we're going to do one starting in September here in Morinville. Uh, it will run till December 14th and we'll also have um, pods from other communities. So we're going to try something new this time. But the whole idea is that you're doing it with a group of people that you're actually doing life with because that's kind of where the rubber hits the road, isn't it? Um, the gospel is meant to be lived out. It's meant to be transformational. And so when you wrestle these things with people who are particularly not of the same views as you might be, it even gets more deep and more exciting about uh, finding how much God loves us and how much grace he has for us. And so it has been super profound in my life. You've used this, this term, doing life together, several times now. So can you give me some examples or some testimonies of how you are doing life together with others and kind of what God has done through those relationships? Mm. Yeah, I think for the many people that uh, the Lord has brought that call themselves Fusion Canada, has been that small group of friends that want to do life together, share in the hard stuff, uh, cry with each other, laugh with each other, rejoice with each other, um, be on mission with each other, but not as an event or a program, but really where the rubber hits the road, doing life together. So I know there's times when, um, yeah, profound times where I have had crisis in my own family uh, with my children or my grandchildren and I have been had this group of friends that have been around me that have prayed for me and celebrated me and held me up when I just wanted to fall down and I think that's been the biggest thing where mm, yeah it, it was very very deep um, I, I guess that's the word that I would use people who have your back, prayer warriors who are around you, um, and diverse people that I may not have chosen if I had to choose. And I, I think that's the other thing I celebrate is that who I was 10 years ago is, thank God, different than who I am now. The Refiner's Fire and my, my diverse group of, small group of friends that I do life with that challenge me, ask me the hard questions, so it's not superficial, and I guess that's what I love about it, Daniel. That's wonderful. Right now we're sitting inside a Fusion thrift shop. It's right here in downtown Moorville. Moorville's not very big, no. like 7,000 people, but this is the, the little town where my wife grew up, and 
you have this this thrift shop here uh, but it's under the the fusion ministry and so you're using it to to reach out to the community you're right here in the middle of the community yeah. the other day my my wife was helping my father-in-law to clean out his house and so uh, we had some stuff and, and brought it over here and we saw that you already put it out for sale <laughs> and uh, my wife even came and bought some some books and stuff at, so we're being part of the community and, but to kind of talk to me about the, the vision for this thrift shop and, and how you use it to, to help people in the community. Yeah, and that's a really good um, uh, segue to what do we mean by community. So I will have my community of people around me, and then there's the community of Morinville and the people that we do life with. And so um, how the Lord birth this thrift store is always a, an amazing story to me uh, Kathy the assistant manager and I turned up to do sandwiches for a funeral at our church and we ended up having this amazing conversation and and we both had a heart to do this and honestly within weeks it was happening and both of us would look back and say wow we did not see this exact thing coming and so the goodness of God um, he wanted something in the heart of this community where people can come shopping, yes, providing um, reasonably priced clothing and housewares because there is no clothing store in Morinville would be one very upfront need. Um, but I've just found that people will be dancing and singing to Johnny Cash. I've been sharing um, my story with some people who ask questions and and they say I got to get back to church and my son died and I need some support and so the whole the whole place has been so holy spirit filled the conversations that we have now we have a partnership with Jesse's house um, victim services social services the town the hotel um, other congregations who have people in need and really uh, you can't outgive God, Daniel. You can't outgive God. So as fast as it pours in, as fast as it can go out, um, people are being blessed by the abundance and generosity of people who donate to the store. And we've just been able to pour that abundant blessing back out the front door. And I am in awe. I got to tell you, I stand in awe of the goodness of God. And... Um, yeah, how much he loves Morinville and how much he loves this community and how much he uh, wants to be revealed to his people. Well, I so love all the different things that, that Fusion Canada is doing. Let's talk a little bit about vision. What do you hope to see God do in the future and how can this reach other people here in Canada and other parts mm -hmm. of the world? Yeah, look, that's uh, that's a really good question. We walk, we walk by faith, not by sight. We walk day by day, and what I see the Lord doing now, moving Maddie and Ashley to Australia here in the next year, it's going to become very um, uh, related to fusion in our in India, Nepal, um, Africa, where we have people who really want to have foundations more accessible and so using zoom and and other technology to make the teaching and the training accept accessible for the purpose of discipleship not for the purpose of getting more information in people's head but for the purpose of serving remote indian communities so that and in canada i would love to fly into northern remote areas we've always had a dream of flying into northern remote areas doing the foundations course doing festivals empowering and training teams so that it isn't dependent on us but that you can encourage others who are waiting to share the gospel and give them hope and a way to do that so across canada uh, in the northern remote areas and yeah jerusalem judea and to the ends of the earth <laughs> what a tremendous vision well we have lots of listeners who are here in canada and in other parts of the world and, and so if someone's listening and they would like to find out more about fusion or or even support what god mm -hmm. is doing through you what's your website what's a way that they could find more information about you yes you can go to www 
fusioncanada.ca, fusion, F-U-S-I-O-N, and um, everything that we've talked about today, there's snippets of it. Uh, all the contact information is there as well, Daniel. And we would love to dream with people. Um, we would say, what's God doing in your community? And how can the tools we have help you to grow that and bring life and hope to that? So that would be our offer, and we would be happy to come wherever you are. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for being on the Evangelism Podcast. Thank you, Daniel, and blessings to you and your family and King Ministries as well. Daniel King is on a mission to save one million souls a year, but he can't do it alone. Would you consider sowing a financial seed today? To give, please visit www.kingministries.com.